Hello everybody. Welcome to the Izmir module of Daire online series within the frame of Daire Artist in Residency program uh, conducted by K2 Contemporary Arts Association. Project Daire, which forms social networks and through artist in residency programs, is financed by the European Union and Turkish Republic. The project coordinated by K2 Contemporary Art Association titled creating a network among civil society organizations and public institutions through artists and residence program has been entitled to be supported as part of the CSO partnerships and networks on strengthening cooperation between public sector and CSOs grant scheme financed by the European Union and the Republic of Turkey and conducted by the Republic of Turkey Ministry of Foreign Affairs Directorate for European Union affairs within the framework of the civil society support program. Daire aims to build capacities of public institutions and civil society organizations in Turkey in the field of art by enhancing good cooperation among them in order to provide their involvement in policy making and decision making processes. The project is realized with the partnership of Nomad Mind Association Izmir. Troya Culture Association, Çanakkale, Hatay Metropolitan Municipality, and Center for Contemporary Arts, Ljubljana, Slovenia. The project is conducted in nine cities of Turkey, Izmir, Çanakkale, Hatay, Istanbul, Sinop, Diyarbakır, Mardin, Nevşehir, and Mersin. As part of Daire, the selection committee selected nine artists who are experienced and knowledgeable in the related subject in order to conduct the artist and residency program taking place in nine cities. A national open call was announced in order to determine three resident participants for each of the nine programs conducted by these nine artists. The advisory board determined the participants for each of the cities that the project takes place. Attending these programs was also possible within reasonable bounds for local artists in these nine cities. In this respect, it's aimed to expand the created network as well as increasing participation and sustainability. The project, which includes activities aiming to enhance management and communication capacities of CSOs, intends to raise a general awareness in the area of contemporary art, starting with the opening meeting until the closing event. In this purpose, in all of these nine cities, Izmir being the center, presentation meetings, needs assessments, resource evaluations, workshops, panel discussions, performances, and exhibitions are being arranged with public institutions, non-governmental organizations, and university representatives. Our artist in residency program in Izmir from 2nd to 9th February, 2019, happened uh, within the neighborhood called Karantin, in Turkish Karantina, and we made a conference in French Institute. Our moderator was Tomislav Brajnovic. Our participating artists were Ayşe Suduran, Şebnem Yüksel, Ufuk Şenel. Our artists participating from Izmir were Can Süperin İşbilen, Fatih Gençkal, Serenay Oğuz, Sarp Keskiner. We are here together with also K2 Contemporary Art Association's uh, head, Ayşegül Kurtel. I, wa I want to give the word to her. Welcome, Ayşegül. Hello, thank you for this uh, wonderful introduction to this uh, uh, wonderful meeting. Uh, so I really want to welcome uh, my dear friend, Tomislav Branovic. Uh, to attend this meeting um, and to be the host of the Izmir uh, residency. And Serenay Oğuz, Fatih Gençkal, Can Su Işbilen, Ayçe Suduran, Zan Sarp Keskiner for being here with us and to uh, participating in the, um, the residency program in Izmir as well. Uh, as uh, Shafak have already uh, mentioned about um, the, the basic uh, construction of the, the project. I want to speak more of the uh, more about what we have done in Izmir, and maybe I might need to start with a general 
uh, idea of the whole uh, project. It was, um, uh, as, uh, as Shafak has mentioned, the cities we have selected, they are selected, these cities have been selected because they've been uh, uh, the cities and uh, the, the, with a uh, contemporary art uh, season going on, uh, in, interactions going on in the city. And we already had connections, uh, organic connections, and we had, we've been exchanging um, art uh, projects and artists, and we've been knowing each other. So then uh, we have chosen uh, these uh, eight other uh, cities other than Izmir. And um, for each city we have selected, um, made a agreement with uh, very valuable uh, artists in Turkey. And in Izmir, um, we um, decided to use our international artist uh, uh, uh, part and uh, we invited Tomislav Brino, which, which we have already known, we have worked together uh, in Port Izmir 3, which was um, curated by uh, dear Sasha Nabargoş. So it was 2014 when um, and Tomislav was here already. And uh, when we invited him uh, in his very busy program, thanks to him, he, he put uh, our program in his agenda. And thanks to the, the participating artists also. So it, uh, we already, as um, Shafak have already mentioned, we decided to use, we discussed with the quarantine um, artist initiation. Uh, so they accepted and we made the, the, it was a wonderful, very important contribution to use their space for the whole week. And this whole group uh, started their discussions, meetings. So um, uh, it was not meant to end up with a finished work. Uh, you know, the participating artists have been from many different other disciplines of art. So the main discussion, main aim of this whole project was actually uh, discussing art in general above the uh, uh, disciplines. So it was a, a more like a, a general discussion about uh, uh, the philosophy of art. So it was really very interesting to attend to, to this, uh, attend the discussions and be there as, uh, uh, as long as it was possible. So the group had a few um, excursions, um, site-specific uh, site excursions, and they <clears throat> ended up having these um, discussion meetings. But at the end, thanks to the French, Izmir French Center, who, uh, with uh, the collaboration, with their collaboration, we used their uh, gallery space to make uh, the conference um, uh, at the end of the this uh, residency uh, the program. So the name of the conference actually the topic was dance in between. So um, I, now you're seeing some um, photos from the. Uh, the period when they had the, we had the discussions going on, and also the conference uh, period. So actually, um, after this one week uh, of the residency, as it was in the other cities in Izmir, also the group uh, kept on being in contact, con contact, and then they have been um, all the artists uh, actually uh, individually they kept on their workings, but they also. Uh, started to uh, interact with each other. Uh, that was the second phase of the, the residency program. And then we were actually uh, planning, it was the, the one of the most important parts of the, the, the project called Daire, uh, to host the whole group in Izmir um, in, in June. Unfortunately, with this um, pandemic we are going through, uh, we need to postpone this very important event, but now we're very happy to meet with all the artists who have participated in all the cities and also here, uh, the Izmir group, uh, hosting them uh, in this uh, Zoom meeting. Um, and I am sorry if I did speak too much, so I really want to um, thank 
all the participating artists again. Thanks to Tomislav also to being the mentor of this uh, uh, Izmir program. And uh, I want to give the word to Thank you. I want to give the word to Tomislav Brajnovic. Uh, Tomislav, welcome. Thank you for inviting me in this very important meeting, I think. In the same way, I thought it was important to meet in Izmir a few months ago. And I think that we were really the center of the art world in that moment, because we were discussing really relevant and uh, important topics, anticipating the time we are living in, in this moment. So I would like to, first of all, thank you, Aishigul, for inviting me, Shafak, for your assistance, Serena, Ifait, Sarp, Ansu, Aichis, Suso. We were all together, not always uh, kind of very happy with what was going on, but I think we now maybe realize that uh, those feelings were the feelings that we are kind of dealing now. So I would like just to, to take this paper we were writing in the, in the begin as a concept because it was quite difficult to define the concept since most of the artists were coming from dance performance and visual arts. And uh, so it was difficult to, to think about it. You know, are we gonna go in the direction of kind of classical approach to residences and do some work, or we're gonna deal with some uh, issues that I thought were quite important. So uh, I'm reading a few lines from the, from the text, so it's more uh, accurate. Dance in between as a title refers to dance performance, but it's not restricted to it. It is a metaphor for moving between two spaces, two extremes or two contrasting conditions. The project activity named Dance in Between in Izmir has the intention to open a discussion about the actual state of art in relation to the state of humanity. So just to explain this uh, moving between two positions or two spaces or two conditions, I thought it was kind of moving between analog and di digital, but also as I wrote it down a little bit more accurately, so it's also moving between body and mind. So what I thought and kind of had this uh, very strong feeling that there was something big going on on the, this uh, art or let's say humanity horizon and things that were present actually in the media already for some times just waited for <laughs> to become visible through a, through a catastrophe. So this catastrophe that I didn't actually predict, I was not aware that it's gonna happen through a virus, but it happened actually earlier than, than I thought that the things became visible in a sense that we all shifted our positions from analog to digital. And then uh, I can also read the last word before going to this next topic from this uh, con uh, concept. So the dance in between introduction text was built around the statement that the historical collision of, or clash with the system was physical in revolution, war, protest, strike and action. Now the collision happens on the mental level. The system attacks the spirit because the spirit is strong and the body is weak. So this was the, the idea of the whole residency. And I know it was not pleasant to hear it, you know, from people who are uh, used to use their bodies to make some, some art, to make some performance, that the body became irrelevant. So you can't fight the system with the body anymore because the body, the, the system is going kind of around the body and kind of anticipates the mind. So it's not only influencing the mind, it's anticipating. So it's, I saw it as a, like a, a mind as a porous quantum mechanism where there is this uh, consciousness and the system is finding and searching for our uh, uh, weak points. And he enters through those weak points in our, in our mind. So it, it kind of anticipates art so I would like to, to show one image I have sent to, uh, to K2 platform, just to, to kind of explain what really happened. So how I saw it. So I got these newspapers uh, in the plane where we came to, to Izmir. It was on the 1st of on February. I know it's kind of generic paper, but for me, it was a, a revelation in a sense, because on the first page, there was this, uh, um, a very short uh, notice about what happened in the first month of the, on, the, on the year. 
And here in the corner, if you see it on the image on the, on the right side on the, on the newspaper, there is a text, a short text about this new coronavirus outbreak. Uh, so the photos was from China. The, wi the virus was, was still there, so it was not uh, present in Europe. But people, let's say those tourists were from J Japan, but were also tourists from, from China. They were turned towards uh, images, towards, towards archaeological, let's say, uh, values, uh, sites. They were making selfies. So they were behaving in a sense, if they were not conscious about what's really going on <laughs> in the paper. So that's why I turned my back to, to this, uh, let's say, virtual reality. So I saw this tourists in a, in, a, in, a, in a space of Ephesus in Turkey as a virtual, not real state of things. And I was reading real uh, news. So what happened then? So we, we can go maybe back to, or just leave it for, for a while, just leave it for a few seconds. So what happened in that moment? So all this news for most of us were just a news in some papers. So the, the, the distance between ourselves and the news is huge. Something happens there. It happens in China, it happens in Africa. People die in Africa from, from, from a famine. So we are all kind of sorry, but we are still making, going to, to, to, to tourism. You know, we are enjoying ourselves. We are having our normal lives. Actually, nobody cares. So what happened now? It happened that our body is endangered. So we became news. So we are now in the papers, we are now in the media. So there is no more spectators, there is no more public, so people who are just looking, and artists who are performing or doing something. So we became news, and this relation public or audience towards performance was erased because our bodies are endangered. So now we can come back to, to, to this virtual reality. So uh, that's the main point. So we became news, we became the medium. So we, we actually are in the medium. So that's the hu a huge shift that, that happened. And it, it, it's related to art because if there is no more people who are looking, it means how to, how to behave, how to perform, how, what to say. What, what's the relation? So who we are, what we are saying. So I'm just going back to my, my, uh, what my, my concepts I, I, I wrote here down. So uh, art is completely relevant to, to events because the problem is above art, above politics. So that's the main point. What's, what's happening? Technocracy is uh, taking over. Why? Because we became disinformation. So in this situation with the virus, what happens in the States? People are not believing that the threat is real. They're saying this is a hoax. So it's a kind of, the Democrats invented it to kind of undermine the president. So they, are, they want to take our freedoms uh, back. They want to abolish the second amendment. So there are many things going on around this state of freedom and state of, let's say, lockdown. But the problem is that people are, uh, uh, how, how, how to say it, mixing two things, a real threat and the technocracy that is taking over. So what's going to happen? What's my um, prediction? What's going to happen in the future? Because the system now realized that the weak or uh, sick body is a threat to the economy and the economy is a threat to the system. So we, we see what's going to, what's, what's happening in the States. So this, the economy is kind of, uh, bringing down the big, the great America of, of, of, of you know, of historical, let's say, uh, greatness, actually. So that's, the, that's the most powerful power ever. So a small virus actually is threatening America. So we became a disinformation because people are not listening to the health and safety instructions. And that's why the media, let's say Facebook, YouTube, and all these other uh, fact checkers, started to uh, filter, to filter the information because they don't believe into our sub subjectivity because our sub subjectivity is weak. So it's a long story, but we have a kind of spiritual hole. Culture also took part in it by, by kind of uh, empty, emptying our minds. Art 
also contributed philosophy. So all of it contributed to a state of spiritual emptiness that now kind of uh, is going to be overtaken by technocracy because they're going to say, you are not able to, to make uh, objective conclusions. So we are taking it over. So we are giving to the algorithm and to the um, scientists and, and objective thinkers who are writing algorithms. The, the, the power to define our objective reality. So that's a process that's not gonna stop now with this, uh, let's say, weakening of the virus. It's gonna go further because the system is gonna say, we don't, we, we must prevent this thing to happen again. So they're gonna make everything possible <laughs> to get people comply with their, uh, with their instructions that are in this case, let's say, okay, maybe because there is a, a real threat of the virus, but the system is not gonna stop on the virus, it's gonna widen the threat. So everything and every thought is gonna be against the system, is gonna be filtered and uh, shown as disinformation, as a threat to, to, to the public health, to the public economy, to the public state. So that's something that is really related with everything we were talking in Izmir in those times. I really didn't know it's gonna happen so fast that we're gonna be here now in the media ourselves, threatened, so we can't fly. So we are actually forced not to perform, but maybe as Shafak once said, we're gonna extend our performance to this uh, virtual space, but it's gonna be in, in, the, in the mental, in the spiritual space. So we are now in the cloud and we are fighting against artificial intelligence. And the fight, actually, we are uh, in, a, in, a, in a run, in a, how we, uh, how we call it? So who's gonna come first to this absolute knowledge? And absolute mm -hmm. knowledge, I think it's the, the truth about things. You know, let's say God, for, for me, it's one of the absolute knowledge, one, one, one, one, one of the big knowledges. And I really hope it's gonna, it's gonna be a, a manifestation of God to stop this uh, process of uh, abolishing humanity. So that's what, what we're talking about. So we are now on the edge of humanity abolishment, direct link to the, to the security system. And then art in that sense disappears because if your critical view is abolished, there is no art. So that's my, sorry, Shafak for the time taken. That's in short the, the whole concept of my idea while uh, writing this uh, introduction letter. Yes, I, I will come back to you, uh, Tomislav. Thank you for this great context you created. Actually, it was like really foreseeing this current situation from uh, our, our residency in Israel and our conference. I mean, Dancing Between was the title, but the uh, topics inside Dancing Between was what makes art relevant how can we hide from digital dictatorship? Is ethics teachable and et cetera? It is directly linked to current situation now. Now I want to give the word to Aisha Su. Welcome Aisha Su. Hello. Um, my name is Aisha Sudran uh, and I'm an artist based in Istanbul. Um, I mostly work with sculptural assemblages and installations uh, and my practice focuses on the absurdity of human existence and um, our collective misinterpretations of natural occurrences. Um, I think it's been almost four months since we've spent the week with Tomis Love in Izmir um, and a lot, has, lot has changed globally since then. Um, in order to remember that time in our discussions, I went through uh, pictures on my phone and I checked my notebook for the uh, February notes. Um, after that, I realized that uh, the flight I took from Istanbul to Izmir was the first time I wore a mask, <laughs> actually. And four months ago, I was one of the few people wearing it at the airport. And I remember I was very uncomfortable to like receive um, weird looks from people. Um, somebody even uh, asked me if I was traveling from China and then uh, the man I was sitting next to on the plane told me uh, I should move to another seat if I was ill. Um, so uh, what I'm trying to get as is uh, the concept of a mask as protection uh, was not even properly understood in Turkey four months ago and now it's the law to wear it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it's been very um, intimidating to experience the fact that our way of living can change so suddenly. Um, and there is no stable correspondence to what normal is. And I think that was the main issue Tomislav brought to the table uh, in his myth. Um, he was mostly concerned uh, first as a person and as an artist, as he said, uh, that the small changes happening around us would eventually um, have irreversible effects on our way of living in the near future. And the main focus of our discussions was the digitalization of things, I think. Um, yeah. I'm gonna show you a clip now. Um, I'm gonna share a video clip from my trip together to FS and at the same time, uh, read some of my notes uh, from my discussions um, to give you an idea of the mind state uh, we had back then. So let me, um, the host, if he can uh, enable me to share my screen. Thank you. Okay, I'll show the video and then uh, read for it. Can you see it? Yes. Yes, cool. Let me find the notes. Um, 2nd of February, Zizek, kind dictator, people fighting against 5G, Malovic, some skis appear on the map by having events, exploitation, irrelevance, people are exploited under capitalism until they're irrelevant. 3rd of February, art, you say something without saying it, posting a manifesto with a cat picture adding personal value, making a record out of silence, sleeping city plus dog noise. The irrelevance of body, bioweapons, involuntarily transformation, um, transforming into a bioweapon, ethical dilemma. Coronavirus mutated in an animal market, an unforeseen consequence, vet market, how to survive the 21st century. Orit Gadesh from Davos 2020. You all know Arari, um, useless class from the point of view of economical system, exploited data colonies, biological knowledge plus data plus computing power equals the hacking people and hackable animals, digital dictatorship, life as a drama of decision making. What will happen when computers make decisions? Philosophical bankruptcy. Conceptualizing the new hell and the new heaven. Godlike abilities to re-engineer life versus natural selection. AI and biotech. Humanity is bigger than nations. World Cup is an example of globalism. Agreeing on the same rules to compete. The fix from Netflix. 6th of February, 2020. Mother Earth, Father Sky. Um, so yeah, so I think um, these notes summarize the big words we've discussed in Izmir. Um, I think the juxtaposition between the prophecies about the future of our civilization um, and FS as remains of an ancient civilization um, almost foreshadows that history always repeats itself uh, and that we are disposable. Uh, and at the end of our seven day residency, we had a performative uh, conference at the French uh, Cultural Center in Izmir, uh, where we rediscussed these topics, but also added some performative elements. Uh, but they were like lightly enough to leave the audience confused about um, if we were really performing or not. Uh, here I'd like to mention Ufuk and Shebnam as well, uh, who were the other two non-local participant artists. Uh, they're not in our live talk today because they chose 
moves over words uh, to express themselves as a living, uh, which I find very noble, I think. Uh, now I'm going to show you what three of us had done during the conference with pictures and videos. Um, let me share my screen again. Just a second. Yes. Um, so these pictures and videos are taken from our Facebook page. Uh, called Dancing Between, which was projected live behind us all through the conference. Uh, this is Ufuk. Uh, being invisible to the system, both physically and digitally, was one of the points we've talked about a lot. So every time Ufuk was asked a question uh, during the conference, he hid under the table like that. Um, and I was, yeah, here. Let's. Yeah, it's a short one. Um, and I was doing, uh, basically we had more water bottles than we need on our table to refer to the setups of grand gatherings like Davos. Um, as a performance during our conference, I was reversing the labels of water bottles on the table uh, slowly and one by one. Um, and by the end of the conference, all bottles were turned anonymous. Um, I also played a video I made in 2016, uh, no, 2014, I think, uh, during the talk, um, when we were asked the question, are we hackable animal animals? Um, I'll show you like a 30 second of it. And then I'll, I can leave the link in chat uh, somewhere if you want to watch it. Yes, and, uh, and lastly, uh, Shebnam uh, played a great video of the comedian George Carlin from, uh, I think it's 1992. Um, let me, it's ready here. Um, I think it's from 1992 and I think it's more relevant than ever to what we are going through right now. Uh, I'll play you like 30 seconds of it and uh, leave its link somewhere. Uh, also, you can watch it if you like to see the whole thing. Pack your shit, folks. We're going away. And we won't leave much of a trace either. Thank God for that. Maybe a little styrofoam. Maybe a little styrofoam. <laughs> Brian will be here and we'll be long gone. Just another failed mutation. Just another closed-end biological mistake. And then... And then an evolutionary cul-de-sac. Planet will shake us off like a bad case of fleas. A surface nuisance. <laughs> you want to know how the planet's doing? Ask those people in Pompeii who are frozen. Yeah, basically, it's a whole uh, sketch where uh, he's talking about uh, us trying to save the animals or save the planet is useless because planet will be here long after we are gone and uh, people are the ones who are actually leaving and in trouble. Um, yeah, I think uh, this is the summary of uh, what we've done and talked about and uh, showed during our last conference. Thank you, Aichisu, for your contributions. I want to give the word to Jan now. She was participating as an artist uh, living and working in Izmir. Welcome, Jan Hi, how was uh, it for you? How was everything and how is everything for you now? 
Uh, hi, uh, I'm Jan Supelin Ishbilan. Uh, I work as an architect and I'm involved in cultural and artistic projects uh, with uh, different groups. And Daire was one of the uh, projects that I was involved. Uh, but uh, due, to, due to my work, I had to come uh, back and forth in between this workshop week and to my work because I had to work that week. Uh, so like I was following the I was following the conversations uh, from the participants uh, as well as well as uh, from Tomislav as well, uh, and also uh, as uh, Tomislav and Aichesu mentioned, we discussed uh, all this um, digital dictatorship uh, situation uh, at the conference that we ha uh, had uh, in February. So, like from my perspective, uh, when we were having these conversations back in those days. Um, it is, it is um, interesting to talk about these uh, topics, but it all always sounded like it's kind of a, this topic, um, this topic mindset, let's say. And we, we don't, we didn't really want to believe that it can, uh, it can go for that direction, let's say. Uh, but like the, the week after that we had this uh, workshop in Izmir, I had to go to um, I had to go to Germany for an, uh, another project, and when we were coming back from Germany, there was this um, situation in Germany where there were um, pa uh, patients from Germany had coronavirus, and there were like some safety issues um, safety issues um, taken taken back uh, by the German government, let's say. And we were at the airport and waiting for the people uh, to, to, to, give, to, to give our luggages to the front desk of the airport company. But the system uh, corrupted somehow. So we had to wait like more than five hours or something in the airport. And there were some people who were wearing uh, face masks. And we were wondering why uh, the system has stopped and people were kind of uh, more anxious than normally they are, not because they're gonna miss their flights or something, but there was this fact that there was a, a problem of uh, uh, epidemic or pandemic that they don't really know. Uh, and it is most likely uh, the more, one of the more, mo most dangerous uh, parts of the country is actually the airport. So we had to wait there for five hours and nobody, nobody was like, giving us an explanation and people were very uh, anxious about being there. And in the end, we found out a month later that actually the system, yes, the system corrupted, but it was overcrowded with the airport because of the people who are going for uh, Islamic uh, travels. That was the time, but we were like very, uh, we started with my friends we started to talk about like how bad can it work in in in general and how can we have uh, affection if there is any problem in the airport at that moment and it was kind of an anxious time for us uh, for no reason so like when i look back right now uh, in general uh, unfor unfortunately that how can i say yeah it's like I don't know what can I say more about what we have spoken in general. Um, in, in me, I always go from optimism to pessimism as we discussed in the um, conference in February still. And um, uh, yeah, I think this digital dictatorship issue might be closer than we thought in general, but this is also about um, human human being. What can we do about it related to this situation? Let's say, uh, but uh, in in general, I think uh, art art is art art may be the one of the key elements of uh, how do you say not maybe stop it, but uh, convert it to something else than a dictatorship, if it's uh, made wisely, let's say. Thank you, Jansu. 
Actually, I was very surprised when this uh, pandemic situation started, and uh, I didn't actually really believe that it is going to be something like this. I mean, uh, I said, okay, pandemic comes and goes. But now, really, uh, it is very surprising and shocking to see people with the masks on their faces on the street, and it became a rule, as uh, Aishisu said. Yes, it is interesting, but uh, there, there, I believe in surprises and the magic in the world. So something nice is going to happen, hopefully. We cannot be sure about that, of course. Fatih Gençkal uh, is with us, together with us. Welcome, Fatih. How was it for you and how is it for you, for you now? Okay, hi. Um, well, this um, discussion is uh, making me a little bit of, a little bit, um, how to say, uh, desperate in a way. This whole, the context that uh, Tomislav just pictured for us and then the, the ensuing conversations that people brought up um, I read an article the other day, which was saying, uh, like, which was actually a, like looking like a very scientific article, not scientific, but giving a lot of scientific references to people, to peer reviewed uh, um, journals and stuff, uh, and trying to prove that how um, exaggerated this whole coronavirus issue is by the media on purpose. I don't know why, it doesn't say why, <laughs> but it has this um, element of conspiracy, conspiracy tone to it, this article. I mean, I'm sure you've read similar things, you've had similar conversations, whether this is right, this is true, this is not true. Uh, is this real or is this like a um, step to go towards this, what we call digital dictatorship um, or um, tightening the grasp of, uh, this digital world on our lives and stuff like that. But I read this article and I said, okay, this kind of looks like it makes sense. And, uh, and then I said, okay, what, what, what do I know? What's my way of, well, how can I possibly know as a, as a person, as an individual, as, as groups of people, as peoples, as societies, like how, what is our way of knowing anything? Uh, if it's, um, if it's real or not. <laughs> so this is maybe a pre-corona issue that, I mean, it's really getting harder and harder to really know what's going on. Uh, there's an abundance of information that's around everywhere. And uh, right now um, it's harder and harder to decipher and to contextualize all this information and make use of all this information. Um, so I think that's a huge challenge. That's uh, I think the the uh, fact that we have actually stopped in our tracks and in our lives, and we are at home, most of us, and then having a lot of time to process, to reflect, and stuff. I think we're realizing the world that we are living in, as as uh, Tomislav um, uh, pictured for us. Um, so in, in this kind of an environment, I'm feeling a little bit, again, uh, desperate uh, somehow, like we are sort of dependent on many, a complex web of information that's being around and like r right now, mostly monopolized, looks like it's monopolized by governments. Okay, so each, in each country, the government gives numbers, makes the decisions, and then you have no um, other option but to obey them in a way and like it's it's funny I, I don't think any the governments have had so much power on us in a long long time in, in this direct way uh, which is on one hand it makes sense on the other hand it's like there's always this doubt like maybe we are being manipulated maybe we're not I'm not saying like I'm not really uh, trying to advocate the, the, any, par um, any conspiracy theories here. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is like, um, it's, um, we can't somehow make our own agendas 
it's harder and harder in this time to make our up the agendas that we want to pursue you know what what what do we want to talk about what what is what is going on um it there are a lot of different topics that are out there and especially as artists like the validity of what we do is a huge question so i'm um yeah, maybe we can go around uh, speaking about this later on, but I, I might also, I, this was an issue for me during our talks in Izmir as well. Uh, I mean, we were always picturing this, uh, this, um, what, this thing that we're in, uh, this digital dictatorship or whatever you want to call it. And then how to respond to it or where we stand is always like a question for me, like, okay, what do we do with this? Um, so maybe I, I'm just thinking a lot about this these days um, and mostly concerned about this, I would say. Um, so like, for example, this mask situation, like I, I, I distinctly remember on TV in Turkey when the, uh, it first started the pandemic, uh, there were, you know, specialists and like uh, doctors and medical people who were saying the mask you don't need to wear a mask. You don't need to wear a mask because it's not going to protect you. And like I, I remember in the in the uh, streets, they were interviewing people, and then there was a doctor saying that you don't actually need to wear that mask. <laughs> and now it's it's uh, it's a law to make it. I mean, um, it's I don't know what this is really. Like, is this a confusion on the parts of the the, the, the medical agencies, or uh, is this uh, has things changed, or you know? Um, everything is like pieces of information and then it's always changing. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, this is my contribution for now. <laughs> yes, there is a, a huge loss of truth and loss of intimacy. And I think they like to see us veiled, like uh, we cover our faces with <laughs> some, some kind of... Uh, curtain or something like that. I mean, it is more, uh, maybe more mystic looking. Yes, Sarp Keskiner, welcome. It is nice to see you. Uh, culture director. Yes, we can, we hear you now. Yes. Hello. Hi, Sarp. Welcome. Yeah. Uh, this is Sarp Keskiner. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, and I'm so glad to be a participant uh, of this project. Um, I'm a culture director, composer, and editor. Uh, and I work with various initiatives and structures, uh, designing events. Also, uh, we have initiatives working on cultural policy, heritage, uh, and uh, I'm kind of like uh, so um, uncomfortable with the situation uh, that we are in, as I feel like we are getting trapped uh, in a digital world, uh, and it is expected uh, from us to uh, disconnect from the analog world and uh, it really makes me unhappy and uncomfortable. Uh, I'm, I was asked, uh, you know, since two months uh, under the lockdown, I'm asking questions to myself, I'm asking questions to my friends and I'm trying to understand what's happening around the world and in other cities uh, and I'm quite concerned about some issues and I would like to uh, share those uh, issues with you. Um, first of all, I reject the call titled as the new normal as it is simultaneously tends to oblige us to fit in this situation of lockdown and it destroys the will and motivation to look forward. The new normal was a minute ago and a minute later another new normal which will take its place. Instead of getting trapped in digital prefaces and trying to fit in the new normal, I think we need to look uh, for the ways to sustain our relationship with the space and the audience. Space and the audience. 
this I really care uh, uh, about the space and the audience because if we cannot sustain our spaces uh, as a musician, if we cannot uh, find a place to perform, if we lose the audience because those planes won't be sustained, you know, after the lockdown for three months, which is a quite a long time for uh, venues. Uh, this really worries me a lot. And I think we have to get in touch with other structures to exchange ideas to build our new normal. Building our new normal is really uh, important up to me because if we do not tend to build our new normal together with the solidarity and you know, with uh, uh, exchanging ideas, then uh, we have to uh, somehow accept uh, the concept of the new normal, which I mean, they oblige us to be a part of it. Uh, and also, maybe we need to rediscuss the meaning of space. Uh, we are shut down in a space for such a long time, but I mean, before the pandemic, we were talking about sustaining the space, we were talking about finding new spaces. Uh, and now we have to rediscuss it. And regarding performance, uh, performing arts and contemporary arts, um, I sense that we are somehow are bullied to fit in a cyber world which serves unlimited of prefaces and tools to increase audience, to network. But what about the experience to be created in the space and in the time period? For example, uh, would I like to watch Serenai performing in, his, in her room? Or would I like to watch Serenai performing in, a, uh, in an art space? So this, those are the questions for me. And what about the social habitat of the performance? What about the communications face-to-face -face, uh, between the, with the audience after the event? So uh, I think uh, we, have, we all have to care about finding answers to those questions. Yes, sir, thank you, actually. I, I think we all uh, would like to see Serenai performing just in front of us than uh, through an inter interface and in her room. But also uh, seeing Serenai performing in any way is nice, but the more acceptable one is preferably uh, seeing her in front of us. Actually, uh, these interfaces really uh, are very limiting our expressions. I mean, from three dimension, we can we only can see things in two dimensions now. So it is really uncomfortable situation. I agree with you. Uh, maybe Serena can give a pause to her collage and uh, come and join us because she's. <laughs> She started to this collage in French Institute, and she's still continuing. I, I, I mean, very. Uh, she's very decisive with this uh, collage making thing. Actually, this is a way of I think maybe not just being uh, on the sitting position uh, in front of the screen and then moving in the space and then feel it, as they mentioned that performers uh, prefer using their bodies, even if it is weak or weaker than the soul. So, uh, Mr. Brainovic, what is written behind you on your wall? Uh, on the wall, it's a dictatorship of love. So that's something I coined, let's say, a few years ago, saying that uh, as, it, as there is a, a, a physical gravity, there should, should be also spiritual gravity. So the physical gravity punishes you immediately and the spiritual kind of waits until the, the right moment. So just if I can just relate to Fatih and Sarp and uh, Aichis and all of you brought in very, very important issues. I wrote some, some notes down, so it's going to be short. Uh, so what I want to say is this crisis doesn't begin with the virus. So it, it started, it's, it's a historical problem. This, crisis, this virus just made it visible. So we have a problem, a big problem. I call it progress, historical progress, the war machine who is building up. So 
And then in the moment, all realized something's happening because before that moment, they thought everything was normal. That's why now we have this new normal, but this new normal is kind of a follow up of the bad normal that we had be before the crisis. So Fatih said there is a conspiracy. I also be believe there is a conspiracy, but if there is a conspiracy, they did it with a real threat because there are real consequences in, in the States, in Russia, in Brazil, in China. So all those economies stopped. So the big, uh, the big one who is behind this didn't need, you know, to, or doesn't need to, to, to fake it. He just unleashes a virus and that's it. And then the whole thing is going to develop uh, following the potential. So all these governments are, I don't want to mention the, the bad name, but they're kind of autocratic, let's say. They would like to avoid democracy. So now they have a big, uh, a big reason. So they don't ask people what to do, but they act directly because there is a life threat. So they are kind of, uh, you know, it's logical they're going to do it because the, we need a very fast and very strong decision. So they are kind of under the shadow of, of the real threat. They are pushing their kind of hidden agendas, you know, so that, that's what, what's happening. And then another word that was mentioned by SARP, I think, is the solidarity. So I was following quite a lot the leftist uh, DM25 platform. So their main idea is solidarity. They have some uh, examples of Brazilian bands who are helping old people, Sicilian mafia helping people, Croatian mafia helping people, you know, because people, when they are in the crisis, they be behave, let's say, more, more, uh, more as, a, as a human. But the problem is that solidarity cannot be uh, connected only with the crisis. Because otherwise it would mean we need a constant crisis to be constantly, so, to have solidarity all the time. So what is the, let's say, quantum moment, quantum energy to have this uh, kind of uh, uh, generator, generator of something in yourself in order to produce solidarity even when the crisis is gone? So that's the main question that everybody kind of uh, asks, you know, this Harari that I just saw had in her video, you know, and then Zizek, uh, then Varoufakis, uh, Shoshana Zubov, who is talking about the surveillance capitalism. So all these guys know that there should be some change. They all see this crisis as a moment for change. In the same way they thought 2001 was, was going to be a moment for, for change. 2008, the crisis in America is going to be a moment for change. Now they have the biggest crisis in America ever, actually, 30 million more uh, uh, unemployed, thousands of dead people every day, the crisis of the system. So, but there is, no, uh, sorry, Fatih, to say this, but I don't, see, I don't see human solution because the human solution, let's say in the States was maybe Sanders, but he's out of the game because there is no room for human solution because there is a, lot, is, is a threat and everybody says, okay, when we go, get rid of this threat, then we're gonna think about humanity. So there is always a big problem that has to be solved first. So the system is gonna produce new, new problems and, and give us solutions. So one of the solutions is gonna be this algorithm who is kind of thinking instead of us because we are incapable to, to, to, to give uh, right answers. You know, we are dis disinformed, nobody knows what's happening. So they're gonna say, okay, don't, you know, don't use your brain here is the answer. He's the expert uh, medical. Somebody mentioned medical experts. They also have personal bias. There are also people who some of them believe in the conspiracy, some don't. So their expertise has no value. The only expertise is our own uh, <laughs> cognition. So that's what remains. We remain on our own not only physically but mentally. We have to make our own decisions. So, so that's my Let's say last point. Maybe I have it from this. Uh, from this, uh, if I can read just a sentence, then I'm over with my. So it's from this text, uh, the death of the audience. So I'm talking about the man who is not anymore artist, but he has this experience of an artist. So I, I'm talking about him. So he's a man who, through his clear speaking up, anticipating artificial intelligence reaches absolute cognition, which constitutes the fundamental truth about the nature of things and man. Through such clear action, he assumes the risk of determining 
meaning, accepting God and his foundations, reasons, science, and the law. So this was the conclusion after this uh, Roland Bar text where he declares the death of the author. So I think now we, you are, you're coming back to the, let's say, rebirth of the author. So everybody's an author, everybody, not only artists, and everybody has to de define, actually to give the answer on their own perception. So nobody's gonna give it for us. So that's my last, let's say, word to artists, to everybody. So we are on our own, except if you believe in God, maybe then we have a, a, a hope, you know, for some issue, some exit from, from this uh, nightmare. But I don't see a human, let's say, solution. That's my kind of depressive uh, reaction to it. Thank you, Tomislav. Thank Welcome. you. Uh, but maybe I would like to hear about that uh, a little bit more about you don't see any human solution, but uh, what do you mean, for example, a spiritual solution, or uh, do you believe in apocalypse? And uh, do you think it is going to be posted on Facebook? Uh, if, if, sorry, I don't want to kind of uh, take over the, the discussion because it's, it's my view, you know, but uh -huh. yeah, I believe in, in the manifestation of this, we call it everybody calls it God, we have different names, Allah or, you know, the problem that the religion, most of the religion kind of set up on the notion. So when we say God or Allah, we all think about certain religion, but mm -hmm. I think about the quantum God, so something that is mm -hmm. the whole universe, so it's, it's much bigger than our perceptions. Mm -hmm. So if I make it, can make it short, we are heading towards loss of humanity. So if mm -hmm brain is going to be hacked, as I just said. So we, if we are hackable animals, and we are, mm -hmm. so if Elon Musk su succeeds to make this narrow link work, mm -hmm. so it's going to be connected directly to this security system cloud, then you're not human anymore in that kind of traditional sense of uh, understanding me here inside, and then the uh, real or uh, outer world outside. So this, this kind of board is going to be broken. And this is the end of human species as we knew it. So this is the end of, let's say, God's creation of a man with his free will. So there is no free will anymore. The system can program you subtly. So you don't know. It's, maybe it's not going to even happen with chip. It's going to happen with some frequency, frequency or whatever. But there, there is going to be an input to uh, to get rid of this disinformation of the threat of our subjective kind of uh, thought that is that because we are lost, humanity is lost in its sub sub subjectivity and the system mm -hmm. is working on instilling and optimizing kind of ob objectively <laughs> the, the, the, the, the whole space. So that's what's going on. So the only solution I see is in, in intervention, this power that I believe exists, that's gonna say enough is enough, dictatorship of love, who's gonna comply is gonna leave, the other is gonna die. And that's, that's the, the ultimate solution, how, how I see it, you know? So sorry to, <laughs> to speak so openly about my deep, deep uh, beliefs, but that's, that's reality. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you for your honesty and openness. Uh, Ayshigul, uh, would you like to add something? Uh Thank you. Actually, um, it's not easy to keep on uh, speaking over being a, a, such a in a pessimistic uh, platform. I guess I am more on the uh, optimistic side, and as uh, I can see the you know conspiracy theories flying around, and I'm the, I'm sure there is this power which is organizing all whatever, uh, but um, as of today, uh, I believe in art and artists actually, and I think art uh, is the only free, uh, space of freedom that we can move around. So I am sure that um, we will, if there will be a solution somehow, that will be through art. So I believe that we should keep on thinking in artistic. Uh, way of thinking and the philosophy of course and being aware and the solution 
I, it's not easy to say a solution, but we'll see what happens. And I'm sure artists will take their part in the next step we'll be uh, taking. So um, I believe in art and I believe in uh, the artistic uh, approaches. I'm not that much of a pessimistic, actually. I, uh, we have to be friends with, we have to learn how to be friends with nature. So that's actually why uh, as SK2 now we are uh, approaching this, um, uh, our works in, um, breathe, in Urla Breathing Zone. Uh, we have to maybe start all over again to, uh, to, to reach nature, to start, um, uh, creating our relation, good relation with uh, nature back again and follow nature's path. And then maybe we can find uh, an opening. It uh, should be, we need a uh, breathing zones. So art should create these breathing zones. And when uh, men uh, start uh, freely breathing, we will find his own solution. So. I guess this is what I think. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree with you actually. Maybe nature and artists are manifestation of God. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Serenai. Uh, what did you prepare for us? <laughs> we only can see things in two dimensions now. So this is really uncomfortable situation, I agree with you. Uh, we, maybe Senai, can you pass to her collage and uh, come and join us? Because she's, <laughs> she started to this collage in French Institute and she's still continuing. I, I, I'm very, uh, she's very decisive with this uh, collage making. Thank you. Actually, this is a way of, I think, maybe not just being uh, on the sitting position uh, in front of the screen and then moving in the space and then feel, as they mentioned, that performers uh, prefer using their bodies uh, even if it is weak or weaker than the soul. So, uh, Mr. Brainovich, what is written behind you on your wall? Uh, on the wall, it's a dictatorship of love. So that's something I coined, let's say, years ago, saying that uh, as, it, as there is a, a, a physical gravity, there should, should be also... Beautiful, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. When I was with Seeing you, I put some um, I mean, simultaneously something in it. So, yeah, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> Super, I have I, no idea I, about the result. <laughs> I, I saw uh, some Turkish and European Union flags, I saw some uh, cameras <laughs> and some words like uh, very poetic, everything is gonna be all right. What are you looking at? <laughs> yes, it was quite a deep response to the topics that we, and we are talking about. Would you like to add something verbal on them or would you like to leave it like this? Okay, thank you. I want to leave it like this. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tomislav, can I take your uh, last words before uh, closing this meeting? Maybe, maybe there is somebody else who wants to, to, to have some last words, but I just, just, just one word. Uh, don't don't uh, misunderstand me. So I'm a very big optimist. There is a bright future coming. The only problem is to be part of it, you know? So I'm invited yeah. to all. And the only thing I can say, you know, it's needed to be part of it is to have a quantum spark of deep love. So to have it. So if you can imagine the difference between to have something and not to have it, so it's a quality, uh, quali qualitative, qualitative uh, difference. So we have it. 
and that's it. That that is going to be enough for eternal life. So that's my opinion. So it's enough to have this deep spark of quantum love, and that's something I think we share all of us here. So there is no no fear for us. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tomislav. I share your optimism. Aishesu, would you like to add something? No, actually, I think uh, Tomislav's ending was perfect and more on an optimistic note. I think we can leave it like that. Okay, thank you. Jansu? Aichesu? I agree with Aichesu. Uh, I think Tomislav's ending was uh, perfect for this topic. Thank you. Mr. Genshka? Mr. Keskner? There's this beautiful song, uh, so it's going to be, maybe it's appropriate to, uh, for an ending uh, from Al Green. Let's stay together. <laughs> stay together, learn the flowers, go light. <laughs> Ms. Kurtel, Ayşegül Kurtel, dear Ayşegül, what would you, what, how would you like to close this meeting? Of course, I would like to thank all the participants and uh, you, Shafak, for the, this uh, moderating this wonderful meeting. Uh, and I agree with all the other participants. I don't want to add anything over Tomislav saying we have to love. Love ourselves, love everybody, love the earth and the universe. So uh, art... Uh, again, I believe that art is the only means which would show us the way together with nature, nat art, nature, and love. I guess these should be the three words we should follow. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Ayşegül. Thank you, everybody, for participating this Zoom meeting. Hope to see you face-to-face -face in very close time. Goodbye.